and welcome back to Catholic Pipes. My name is Kadesh. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a break in between the uh, Briar Chronicles series, only because at the end of the day, the pipe making process, it can be quick, it can be labor intensive, and so the next phase is going to be stem work. And so there's a lot of prep work that I have to get ready for the video. So in between, I thought I would share with you guys something that's equally valuable besides learning how to make a pipe, and that's learning how to smoke a pipe. And this is something that I've seen from beginners. Every single time you get the same questions, you get the same trial and error, the same roadblocks. So I'm here to give a very simple tutorial on how to smoke a pipe. So first things first, you need a pipe. This is a nice little billiard shape. Yeah, very classic, very nice. I love the uh, very diminutive proportions how it's very lightweight small but this is a good hour long uh smoke pretty much it's it's pretty hefty so when it comes to smoking a pipe i think what we have to remember first and foremost it's not a competition smoking a pipe is really a personal ritual that's what makes it so contemplative and so relaxing it's it's the reality of when you smoke a pipe the whole purpose is relaxation. So we need to make sure that the technique that we're utilizing, and mind you, there are numerous different techniques. Go to your local pipe club if you have one, or your brick and mortar tobacco shop, and ask the person there how to smoke a pipe, and I guarantee you, their answer is gonna be different than the next, than the next person. But there are some tried and true techniques to help get you started. And that's what we wanna do. Let's help you get started on your pipe smoking journey. So first and foremost, tobacco choice. That's gonna be very important. Typically for a lot of pipe smokers, when they get started, they choose the more, um, how, do you, how do you say it? The more O factory or the nose friendly one. So they're gonna have your flavored tobaccos. And when it comes to flavored tobaccos, you can get almost any flavor underneath the sun. But the one pitfall you have to be worried about is that, remember, flavored pipe tobacco comes from an additive being added to it, and it's additive. And it's usually in the form of some sort of liquid that's added to it, which can make the tobacco extraordinarily moist. And two things happen when you have really moist tobacco. Number one, it can increase the likelihood of gurgling. Now, gurgling, for those of you who have experienced it, it's not fun, it's unpleasant. And for those of you who have not experienced that just yet, it's when you are puffing on your pipe and you just feel like there's liquid inside of your pipe. You can hear it kind of bubbling as you draw in. And that can come from tobacco that is way too moist. And once again, that can happen, that happens more often than not with your flavored tobaccos but that can happen with any tobacco that tends to be really um, really sticky or very, uh, very moisture heavy. So right here I have a tobacco that is the Rainier Gold. And as I mentioned before, this is a Virginia based um, tobacco. And Virginia tobacco is what typically comprises um, cigarettes. Now mind you, it is not the same thing simply because within a cigarette there are so many more additives inside it that make it harmful for your health plus the whole purpose is to inhale all that smoke so not only are you getting the tobacco anything that's burning is bad for you a campfire smoke that's bad for you and has about five times as many carcinogens as pipe smoke does so be mindful of that it's kind of a pick your poison type thing but if we look at this tobacco here um, and pipe tobacco, mind you, doesn't have the additives. And with the cigarette, there's the burning of the paper too. So as you are smoking your cigarette, you're also inhaling the carbon in that buildup that's inside the wrapper itself. You don't have that with pipe tobacco, just pure tobacco. Now, if we look here, I have dried this tobacco out a little bit because when it came out of the tin, it was very rubbery, very malleable. So I know there was a, a higher water content to it. So I like to get my the amount of tobacco that I'm going to be smoking. I like to take it out maybe about an hour or so before I actually smoke it. So now when we look at it, you can see here when I squeeze it together, it kind of stays together a little bit, but then falls apart. To me, that's the optimal dryness you want. 
So that way it minimizes the liquid, the gurgling, and it helps it to um, light easier than if it was super, um, super moist. All right, so we have our tobacco. And in this case, you know, some of it comes already, you know, individual pieces are flaked out like this. If not, just if it comes in like ribbons or it comes in a brick of any kind or compressed together, cutting off a piece or breaking off a strand is best. And then I like to put it in my hands and then kind of rub it out into a little dish of some sort. In this case, the tobacco tin works perfectly fine. Now, when you pack the pipe, this is a very important step. And the reason why is because how light or how dense you pack the pipe will determine the quality of smoke that you have. The denser it is, the harder it is for you to pull air in because tobacco is blocking the airway at the bottom. Too light and the tobacco, the tobacco itself is not compressed enough to where the fire can get all the way through. So you might have to relight on that one as well because the tobacco is not packed tight enough. So the question is, what's the appropriate amount? It's kind of an experience thing, but there is a way that I can describe it to you. So when we put the tobacco in, and I've seen various methods in terms of how how much tobacco they want in the bowl. For me personally, I like to pack to the top, but if you are in the mindset of wanting to preserve your pipes and the unfortunate char that can happen on the rim, I always try to pack it at just about three quarters of the way so that way the flame really gets into the bowl itself and doesn't really touch the rim. And once again, that's if you're being mindful of the uh, state of your pipes and making sure they last longer. You may want to pack a little bit less or a little bit under the actual rim so that way the flame and the heat stays in the bowl and isn't kind of bleeding on over onto the, the rim causing it to char. So when I, I gently just start kind of piling the tobacco in and once at the top, I like to push in until I begin to feel resistance. I'm not creating the resistance by shoving it in there. No. I am gently pushing in until I feel it naturally begin to stop. When I start feeling it kind of stopping with gentle pressure, then I know, okay, it's packed enough. This is only half the bowl. So now I'm going to put the rest of the tobacco in there. And this should get me to about three quarters of the way full. And like last time, same technique. I have it in here. I'm going to use my thumb. And the thumb, using you can use a tamper if you'd like. I like to use my thumb because it allows me to feel a little bit better what the pressure's like. So I'm going to push in. Kind of push around so it's even. And mind you, I'm not trying to heavily compress it. I'm just pushing down just enough until I feel resistance in the tobacco. Now, time for the check. I put the pipe up and I have a relatively easy draw. If it feels like you're trying to suck peanut butter through a straw, you have packed the pipe too tightly. And that's totally fine. If you have seen little pipe tools before, they usually have a little pick at the end. Now this is just a little skewer itself, but for illustrative purposes, what they call little check tools is a little tamper, a little scooper, and a little pick. You can use that and poke it in there and use it to help kind of fluff up your tobacco inside the bowl and then re-push down and then draw again. Mm -hmm. You should feel a slight amount of resistance. It shouldn't be so easy that you're just sucking in massive amounts of air. You should not feel like you're trying to suck peanut butter through a straw. It should have somewhere kind of in the middle towards the open draw at the end. Now. Everybody, when they're lighting their pipe or smoking a pipe, they're always thinking that the professional level of pipe smoking, if such a thing exists, is keeping that pipe lit all the time without having to relight. That is a common myth. There is no rule book whatsoever in pipe smoking that says if you can keep the pipe lit from beginning to end without having to relight, you are now therefore a professional pipe smoker. No. The relighting or lighting that is totally up to your preference and your style of smoking. If you're in a social setting and you're smoking a pipe with other people who have cigars, pipes, or a lounge, whatever it may be, the reality is sometimes your pipe's not going to be in your mouth. It's going to be un unattended. And it's 
perfectly normal to expect that pipe to go out because it's not being tended to. There's no air being drawn through it to help those embers stay hot. Um, there's no tamping going on. It will go out and you will inevitably have to relight that pipe. That is A-OK. -okay. So, when it comes to lighting, I have a way that I do it and it's very simple. I don't have a fancy lighter with me, so we're going to go with the good old trusty Bic lighter, blue to match the ambiance lighting. So when you light the pipe, you want to get the flame into the bowl, and what I do is I like to circle on the inside to make sure that I'm getting the top layer of tobacco burned. Simultaneously, you're going to be lightly pulling the air in. Now what it, what's that doing, as I'll illustrate, is pulling the flame into the bowl. So without any without any draw see that the flame doesn't go in now as I draw now the next step you may want to tamper don't use your finger unless you're fireproof anything they'll fit in the bowl will work he almost went out now so I'm going to have to relight a couple times as I speak to you as I demonstrate. When you have that first layer burning, your next action is going to be to pick up your tamper. And the same thing, as you're drawing in, you're going to gently tap, tamp down. Because the heat in the bowl as it gets pulled in is going to make that tobacco kind of blossom a little bit. It's going to open up from the heat. So you're going to go ahead and just kind of gently pack it back down as you're drawing in. And the whole purpose is to help those embers get to the next layer of tobacco and that's what's going to help it stay lit it's the same thing as a campfire you put the kindling in which is that first light and then you're going to be putting more air into it and then more firewood so you're taking care of it and building the flame up same thing here so i'm going to demonstrate one more time as you saw when i'm toking the flame goes into the bowl Now I'm going to tamp. Then I take one last deep pull of the air to ensure that those embers are down. As you can see, now we got, now we're cooking. Now our pipe's going. Now, when you're smoking your pipe, it's one thing to remember. A lot of people will try to transition. I, I have, I've known a couple people are trying to transition from, like say they were a habitual cigarette smoker or a vapor, and they're like, I just kind of want to step away from that and I want to do something that's a little bit more potentially constructive, like to aid in my relaxation. A pipe can do that for you, but you cannot carry those same smoking habits into a pipe because it can damage your mouth. Because if you're pulling in too much heat, you can burn your mouth, which is what we call tongue bite in the pipe world. Um, that was something I forgot to mention with wet tobacco. The secondary effect is not only do you get gurgling, but the steam, that hot air, can burn your mouth. And that's called tongue bite. It takes a couple days to recover from that. You can't taste anything. So making sure the way that you are, or you are drawing or toking in the smoke to your mouth is also going to be very important. This is not a cigarette. This is not a vape device. You're not here trying to puff like a chimney because what's going to happen is it's going to incrementally increase the heat. That's what happens with every fire. If you're blowing air into it, that's what helps it get hotter. Same principle here. As you are drawing in on your pipe, you're forcing air into the bowl, which is going to increase the temperature of the pipe. So once again, if we're trying to look at the longevity of our pipe, we do not want to be toking as fast and furiously as we can because then we can accidentally potentially burn our pipe from the inside out. It's called burnout. And it's really unfortunate. And us pipe makers, we don't insure against that. Uh, when we make a pipe, if one of our materials fails, like a ring cracks or a stem cracks or something like that from it being too thin or was a um an artisan error or craftsman error we will fix that we will replace it 
But if a pipe burns out, that's usually 95% of the time that is user error and that is not covered by the pipe maker. You're out on your own. So you need to take care of your pipe. So how you're drawing your air in matters. And that's why making sure you get that first light is so important and you get that burn going because what people, uh, some pipe smokers will call it, they call it just kind of kissing the stem. You should have it lit well enough to where you can kind of just kind of kiss on the stem and you should be able to get enough smoke into your mouth. And that's where you have that nice rhythm of just filling your mouth with smoke, tasting, and then exhaling. With pipes, the goal is not to inhale and get a nicotine buzz from directly getting the smoke into your lungs. That kind of defeats the purpose. This is not supposed to be a genuine replacement for the nicotine hit that a cigarette will provide. It's supposed to provide something else through the ritual of packing your, uh, picking your pipe, packing your pipe, lighting it, tamping it, keeping it lit. That's the relaxation comes through the ritual. And then as a secondary effect, you get kind of the nicotine sensation, but it should necessarily, it should be a little bit more mild as it's kind of getting absorbed through the soft tissue um, in your mouth. So with that being said, as many of you probably might ask, or if you see this, what are the health benefit or what are the health risks of pipe? The reality is yes, cancer can be a part of it. However, there are things you can do to mitigate that. And one of them is having proper oral hygiene. Do not smoke a pipe and then immediately go to bed. Make sure you always brush your teeth and best if you're smoking a pipe, have something there to sip on as well to kind of help cool your mouth. Usually an iced beverage or maybe a cup of warm tea would be great. But the cancer is not really coming from the tobacco itself. It's actually coming from the heat. So as the heat enters your mouth from the smoke, it's usually hitting the same place over and over and over and over again. So your smoking, um, your smoking method how much smoke is coming into your mouth, how much is going out, what you are drinking with it to help cool your mouth, and then proper oral hygiene are all going to be great, are going to be things you can do to mitigate any potential health risks involved with pipe smoking. And the second thing is going to be how much smoke are you intentionally drawing into your body. So once again, not every puff should be going straight into your lungs. Every once in a while, I personally love to do a French inhale because I get more flavor through the nose. And for those of you who don't know what a French inhale is, it's where you exhale the smoke and then immediately bring it up into the nose. A little demonstration of a French inhale. I've been told that I have a pretty good one. So as we can see, the pipe has gone out. No harm, no foul. We will relight. Should be easier this time because the tobacco is now more dried out from that heat. That, I do that every once in a while, especially with like a new tobacco or I'm trying to get more nuance. The French inhale allows me to taste more through my nose and then it gets translated into my mouth. So, all in all, with the pipe smoking, picking a good pipe, corn cobs, nothing wrong with them. I have a trusty old corn cob. If you want to get started, these guys are what I recommend starting with and building your collection from here. These guys are durable, durable, but they're also highly replaceable. I always have a few of these on hand. Um, the company is called Missouri Meerschaum, and they you can go in there and you can get these guys for under ten dollars they get maybe as expensive as 30 depending on how elaborate of the design is that you want they even you can even get grab bags of like 10 of these guys that are like factory seconds for um really 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 cheap but these guys are great they um they don't add extra flavor to the tobacco so if you are ever at a trade show or you go to your local tinder box or brick and mortar pipe shop and they allow you to sample Having one of these guys is great for sampling tobacco. They're great workhorses. And once again, if they crack or they get broken, you can toss it in another $10. You have another great smoking pipe. Um, 
So corn cobs, highly recommend them to start your pipe smoking journey. Cheap, affordable, replaceable. So picking the pipe, making sure that you allow your tobacco to dry out. So that way you don't end up with the gurgling or potential of tongue bite from hot steam. Pack the pipe slowly, but making sure that as you're pushing down, you're only pushing until you begin to meet resistance. All right. Do your test straw to make sure that it is not like sucking peanut butter through a straw and not like it's a completely open draw, like wind is going straight into your mouth. You want it somewhere kind of in the middle. And then having a good old tamper, anything will work. A nail, golf tee, you can go buy fancy ones. Um, I'm just using a piece of bamboo here. That first initial light drawing in so the flame goes directly into the bowl and not scorching your rim. Once you have that light, tamping as you toke in to make sure that flame gets all the way in to your pipe. And then last but not least, once you get it lit, try that kiss method where you're just gently I'll go here. Just like this. Just light, easy, just gentle breaths to get that nice smoke into your mouth. And I think that about sums up what goes into smoking a pipe. Hopefully there's some ideas in there that you can kind of take away. Hopefully I've got you excited to maybe get into your own pipe smoking journey and i hope you guys tune in for our ongoing briar chronicle series where we are making a bamboo pipe the next video will be on the stem making process that's going to be a doozy because that's probably one of the uh for me one of the more labor intensive aspects of pipe making it requires a lot of precision not just in your lines but in your measurements and there's a lot of artistry that goes into stems themselves. I'm excited to share that with you. So please like, subscribe, and put notifications on so that when we drop a new video, you can be the first one to watch it and share this video. The more people we can spread the joy of pipe smoking and pipe making to, the better. I'll see you guys next week. This is Kadesh with Catholic Pipes.